Okay, um, thanks Alia. So uh, I'm Shamit and uh, I'm with uh, the WSO2 Cloud DevOps team. And uh, my main responsibility is uh, as a DevOps person, uh, uh, one thing is uh, making sure the public cloud offering, uh, WSO2 public cloud is uh, functioning smoothly. It is up and running all the time. Apart from that, uh, my other responsibilities are mainly around our managed cloud offerings, uh, which I will be talking, talking at the latter stages uh, in this presentation. So uh, let's talk about uh, automate and orchestrate and things around that. So uh, this is my agenda. Uh, we will be going through, first let's understand what is automation and what is orchestration means. And then uh, things you can get, things, uh, and uh, benefits of having end-to-end uh, -end automation. And uh, let's take a simple uh, DevOps example and uh, see like uh, how we can do things and what are the things that uh, we can do around that and how you can improve things around that. And then we will talk about uh, something about the tools you can use for automation and orchestration. And then I will be talking about uh, WSO2 App Factory as an orchestration tool. And uh, then I will be talk a uh, few details about uh, managed uh, DevOps service, uh, which we provide as a service. So what is automation? If you take the literal meaning, it means like accomplishment of a task or function without human intervention. So. When you say, so how do you figure out? You might know, you, you, might, you might have seen lots of things in your day-to-day -to -day, day -to -day work. And how do you figure out what is to automate? How would you do that? How do you, do, how do you decide what tasks are to automate? The ones you spend the most time on. You spend the time? And it, yeah, exactly. So the most popular answer is, Things we do repeatedly, things that are things that are like taking time, and things we have to attend on daily basis or regularly, we automate such things. And what does orchestration means? That means arranging and coordination of automated tasks, ultimately resulting in a consolidated process or workflow. What does that mean? So if you take uh, your day-to-day -day practices, if you take, let's take a deployment, for example, or a process, or a work, workflow. So there are certain pieces which we have already automated. There can be pieces which we have already automated, and there can be pieces that still need some manual intervention of a human being, or a program, or some, some other tool. So for orchestration means we take all the pieces that are already automated, and we coordinate we, we have a coordinator that manages those things, that collects data out of those operations, uh, and provide a consolidated process using those uh, components that are automated. So in other words, simply put, unless you, do, you have uh, automation, you cannot achieve, you cannot have orchestration. And look, let's look at the things uh, that could be beneficial if you have end-to-end -end automation. First thing is the visibility. So when I say end-to-end -end automation, that, that includes orchestration as well. So when you have end-to-end -end automation or orchestration, the first thing, the most important thing you get is the visibility. Because with, once you have uh, orchestration in place, you get the chance to collect data from each and every place uh, you have automated. It could be like lot, tons of metadata. It could be times, it could, like time spent on each task. It could be uh, state of each task, whether the task has been completed successfully or not. It could be anything. You get the visibility to lots of data. And from a central place, from a single point, you can access all that data. And you can create dashboards around that, which helps managers and team leads work and life a lot easier. From a single place, you can see what's going on across your deployment, across your data center, and you get the visibility of the whole picture <coughs> with this. And obviously, you have 
automation as well. Like I said earlier, unless you have automation, you cannot have orchestration. So when, when we say automation, what are the things that, we, that comes to our mind, that comes to our mind? So we are talking in the context of DevOps. So what do you guys think as the main responsibility of DevOps? So we all know DevOps is a practice. And I'm sure lots of you guys have DevOps practices placed already in your workplaces. So what do you think as the main responsibility of DevOps? What is their work? Is it just taking care of operations? Like monitoring, backing up, deployment? Is it just that? Or is there anything more? Keeping everything running. Engineering the solution. Engineering the solution. Uh, monitoring, of course. Monitoring, of course. So those are mo most of the things are around operations. So are there anything else that DevOps do? Well, separation of duties, they are developers pushing the production, but implementation engineering. Yes. I think DevOps is applying uh, developer practices to operations. Developer practices to operations. Yeah. I agree with uh, both opinions. So. My understanding, what I believe as DevOps is the main responsibility, once you have DevOps, what you do is you should be able to take changes from developers' laptops or workstations to the production within a very small period of time. You cannot do it unless you have DevOps. So that is the main responsibility of DevOps, taking changes from developers' laptops or workstations into production within a small period of time. When we talk about DevOps, there are so many uh, big places uh, in the world who have this practice in place. And uh, I can say in Amazon, they take changes from developers' laptops to their production system in each 11.2 seconds. So in every 11.2 seconds, they push changes from developers' laptops to the production. So that is all because of DevOps. And the third part is governance. Now that you have, you have orchestration in place, you don't have big silos of data anymore. You have centralized everything. You are taking metadata, and you are taking states, and lots of it. And it that, those values can be anything into a single place, which allows you to uh, establish good governance around those. And when I say governance, that has several aspects. One thing is compliance. Once you, once you start controlling everything from a single place, you can easily apply compliance. You can easily push best practices. You can easily push standards. You just do it once and make it repeatable every time you make a change. You don't have to, if, you, if you're managing several deployments, and when you have orchestration in place, you don't have to go to each and every place and see and apply best practices, standards, compliances. All you can do uh, from a single place. You can control everything from a single place. <clears throat> and the other thing is flexibility. The platform, the DevOps platform or the orchestration platform should be flexible enough to work with all the tools you have. All your tools should be worked together and work as a single platform. <clears throat> a, a, a norm of this uh, context is always write tools so that output of one tool should be an input to another tool. That means you are following a, a common standard across your tools, which means you have standardized your entire platform, and that will become eventually. And when we talk about things getting fixed eventually, the last thing is the ex extensibility. So DevOps or the orchestration doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. So you, maybe you have right now several places or several pieces that you have automated already. And those pieces might have generating lots of data right now. So when you're implementing orchestration, what you can do is you can either Select from the tools you like most, or tools you use most, and start combining those pieces together and start building your orchestration platform. <clears throat> and it's always a gradual transformation. So let's look at this example. Like I said, 
in the context of DevOps, this is uh, the whole story. You pick changes from here, and you deploy in your production system. And you get the feedback from monitoring. And if something isn't right, if something is wrong, you always go back to the develop, and this becomes a feedback loop. So I'm sure many of you might have these steps in place already. So how do you, so what are the things? Do we, like, this is something we cannot automate, obviously. There can be people who love to automate this part, but this is something we cannot, we cannot automate development part, right? So when it comes to testing, this includes the building process and running integration tests, and uh, those, that whole part includes here. So do we have someone in the room who have automated the testing and the build part? Maybe combining some tools, or maybe using a single tool? We have people. And do we have anyone who has automated the stage part, running load tests? And obviously, you might have automated the deploy part as well. But do you have a system that combines these three stages, and once the build happens, it gets deployed automatically? That's the, OK, we have one in the room. You, you have that, right? You have combined all those pieces. So you are my hero. Before that, uh, before you, it was Batman. <laughs> uh, super. So uh, what I found most of the time is people have implemented automation at different stages of this cycle. But it's quite rare to find people who have automated the full, cy full cycle and implement orchestration and collect data and uh, do governance around it. So if I take Facebook as an example, they have tools uh, to automate and orchestrate this full, full cycle. And in the production system, if something goes wrong, they have tools in place to monitor and get the feedback and give the feedback to the developer by mentioning on what revision, on which code line that particular error triggered. It's all automated. So what usually happens is once you build and get the artifact, you have a bunch of automated stuff running on top of it parallelly. It automatically goes to production. And that is, again, based on, driven by policies. Everything is policies at the end, right? So you can have a policy saying, uh, if, my if the integration test pass rate is above 97%, consider this as a go and move to production. Yeah, it, that's another environment. It then gets promoted to QA, and then probably to UAT. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, that's an important point there. I mean, there, there has to be some kind of uh, metadata, like a change ticket approved, mm -hmm. or some gating factor yeah. to get to that final deploy to the final environment. Yeah. For pre production environments, I can see this going around the clock. Uh, but sometimes we also want to deploy only at certain times of night or weekends uh, to have minimum disruption. Yeah, yeah. So that again, again comes to the policies. So there can be policies that are locally implemented, and there can be policies that are like widely accepted in the industry. So when it comes to lo locally implemented policies, uh, yeah, that's true. So in such cases, you can always like accepting what you have and change your process around what you have in your organization. So these are some of the automation and orchestration tools. Uh, there are many more than that, but I have handpicked some of the open source technologies and tools uh, that are out there. Cloud formation, not open source, but I put it there because it's widely used, commonly used, it's very easy to adopt. And M Collective is something that provides by Puppet Labs. Do we have anyone running Puppet internally? 
Yeah, we have quite a few. And any M Collective users? Say that again. M Collective? No? Uh, urban, urban Code Deploy. Urban Code Deploy, okay. So we basically it's the same thing. And anyone who's using CloudFormation? Salt? Salt Stack? Yeah. These are very cool, like, like super, super awesome tools. You should at least give a try once. OK. So uh, this is one classic example for orchestration, WSO2 App Factory. So uh, anyone ever tried? Ever, like, there has been several releases. Uh, and did anyone get a chance to at least download and run the product, at least like read the document? And so this is one fun, fine tool uh, in our stack, in WSO2 stack, that provides DevOps as a service. So what it does is, from the user management, you register users, you create users, you create roles, create permissions there, and you enable them to develop, write their code in a cloud-enabled IDE. And from there, you push the code to your SCM, which is Gitblit. Uh, and then that code gets pulled by Jenkins, run the build, gets deployed on Stratos. And if there are problems, they get reported on Redmine so that users can refer to these and run the loopback cycle. So, when you look at this picture, there are several tools that runs, st runs in the standalone mode. For example, Redmine. It is just one piece. And if you take Gitblit and Jenkins, those are just one single pieces. But if you take Apache Stratos, it is a solution, basically. There are several components working together to build this cloud-enabled uh, platform. So what App Factory does is App Factory becomes the coordinator. App Factory becomes the single point. And it works with all these tools. So when, it, when we look at a typical picture, you can see uh, your, this can be treated as your data center, or your cloud environment, or your IES. And you manage, you provision instances here separately. And most of you might have automated this bit as well. Or uh, from your IDEs, you push the code to the SEM and uh, trigger build automatically. You might have automated that part as well. But like I said earlier, uh, what App Factory does is it combines all these and provides a single place to the user to write code, do SEM, build, and deploy on various environments uh, like dev, uh, test, and production, and do all sorts of management work around that. So with cl few clicks of with few clicks, you can do, you can become your own DevOps and enforce all your DevOps practices and, uh, around the organization. So this is one classic example for, dev for automated DevOps and DevOps in the cloud. I have a question. Yes, so App Factory architecturally supports that. You just have to write the necessary extension point and plug uh, Bamboo instead of Jenkins. And if you want to uh, replace Redmine with maybe Atlassian Jira, that is again possible. Yeah. So architecturally, it supports that. Yeah, yeah, yes. So, Finally, we will talk about uh, the managed service provided by WSO2 DevOps, DevOps team. Uh, this is like we have discussed all these automation and orchestration, data collecting, governing aspects around automation, uh, around orchestration. And what through the managed service, what we do is we, pr we deploy, we, we do the deployments of WSO2 solutions on top of AWS and provide a managed deployment service, a managed 
DevOps service to our clients. So people use this service, people adopt this service due to various reasons. One simple reason could be it's a new organization. Uh, they cannot afford to have an operation team, an operations team uh, instantly. It might take time for them. Another, another reason could be uh, this is fairly new technology to their internal teams, and they want someone who knows the context, someone who knows things around to manage it with their operations team side by side until the oper operations team gets familiar with the technology so that on a later day, they can take over the operations work by themselves. <coughs> People uh, uh, adopt this service due to such reasons. And right now we do deployments, we undertake, like, we do manage, we provide managed services only on top of AWS because it's an environment that we mostly familiar with. And on AWS, it's quite easy to implement standards. It is widely known and uh, lots of, they comply with lots of security and other hosting standards. And so mainly because of that, uh, we chose uh, Amazon AWS, and we provide full DevOps services uh, on top of this managed service, and we provide guarantees as LS, and every, everything else comes under a typical management service. So, any other questions up to now? Yeah, so what we usually do is we create a separate network environment for a particular client. And uh, based on the client requ client's requirement, if the client has multiple environments that needs to be managed by WSO2, we create separate identical, uh, like isolated network environments and do the deployments and then manage those as separate entities. Yes, we provide auto scaling service as well. Uh, using two ways. One is Amazon provider to scaling service, and the other thing is using uh, private pass. Any other? No? Wonderful. So, that's all I have. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.